Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a couple uh, stories to talk to you about today. I don't even have them loaded up on my computer yet, but that's all right because before we get into these stories, I got to remind you we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. That's right, if you would like to win a Nintendo Switch OLED system, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. Uh, that's it. We will actually announce the winner in a stream in early October. First up today, we got to be talking about Bayonetta 3. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, Bayonetta 3 is supposedly uh, coming out on Switch at some point. It was announced back at the Game Awards in 2017, but we haven't really heard anything about it since outside of the director of the game, Kamiya, coming out and saying, hey, um, it's going to come. It's Development's going well. Well, today they were pressed in an interview by Video Game Chronicle, uh, and here's what Kamiya initially said. He said, it was more of a not definitely something will come out this year. And he's referencing uh, when, he's, when he kind of inferred that it might get announced this year. But if, this, if there is a year, then something should happen, right? If you remember last time, I said that even though everyone was asking about Bayonetta 3, maybe you should tell everyone to forget about it for a while. I kind of need to keep to that stance for now because ultimately it's not our decision what to say and when to say it. And this is in reference to when he noted earlier, this is Nintendo's game and Nintendo is in control of all of the marketing and when it's time to talk about it. Studio head Atushi also chimed in and said, there's no need to worry. Don't worry about it at this time. Everything's okay. Then Kamiya further clarified by saying, as much as everyone is clamoring to see it, we are really, really waiting to release it too. Everyone who is working on the project is, of course, very proud of what we're doing and wants everyone to see what we're doing. As much as fans are waiting for it, we are waiting for the day when we can show it. We want everyone to cheer us on as we run to the final stretch. We want to show it too. What's interesting here is obviously a couple of things. One, um, that the Bayonetta 3 team is just, they're getting kind of anxious. They really want this game to be shown. They want to show people what they've been working on, and Nintendo hasn't let it happen yet. That's obviously got to be a little bit frustrating as a development studio. Another thing is that he mentions that they are running to the final stretch, which means they're in the final stages of finishing up this game. Bayonetta 3 is in the stretch run to being complete, which obviously heavily suggests this game is coming out next year. Well, that is if Nintendo wants it to come out next year, because obviously at this point they're literally waiting on Nintendo. Now it's possible Nintendo is going to show this off at the next Nintendo Direct. Maybe they're going to show it off at the Game Awards, which is where it was announced back in 2017. So there's still opportunities for them to show it this year, but it certainly sounds like, at least to my, you know, trained ears or, you know, my untrained ears, whatever you want to say, that by the time we're at this point next year, the game's done. So... Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but I have high hopes that Bayonetta 3 is going to come next year. I think it's just a matter of when is Nintendo going to be willing to talk about it, and why have they waited so long to show it in the first place? Now, Nintendo did wait a long time to show off something like Metroid Dread, and reportedly by the time they showed off Metroid Dread at E3, it was already done and had gone gold, which is why we've been seeing so much about it all the way up to launch here. So maybe they're waiting for the game to go gold, but Nintendo doesn't typically always wait for games to go gold. So I'm not even sure if I buy that argument that they're just waiting until it's 100% done because they don't usually do that. I mean, Zelda, as an example. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5, when they finally showed that at E3, the game wasn't actually finished yet. So yeah, there's a lot um, to consider here in the way Nintendo is choosing to market or not market this game at the time. But yeah, Bayonetta 3 is coming quite confidently I feel, next year. And so the last story, or really the only other story in this video, is dealing with the fact that there might be a Switch price drop next year. Now, I did talk about this yesterday on the Nintendo Prime podcast, so if you saw that episode, there isn't going to be really much new here, although I have some direct translations. Uh, bottom line is, I don't speak French, and all of this information is coming from a French uh, account known as Deals, who has actual retail sources. And it's quite interesting. So the exact tweet at least translated according to someone on Reddit, because again, I don't speak French and Google Translate can be really bad. It says, Nintendo alerts. Nintendo Switch consoles set to drop from Monday and sell around 270 euros. This is the first 
drop since release in March of 2017. And then further clarification comes from a Reset Era user who said, Source is a very reliable deal Twitter account with proven retail sources. A price cut of the Switch will be officially announced Monday, cutting from 329 euros in France to around 270 euros. A price cut this big is unlikely to be tied exclusively to a single region, as it would be priced significantly below every other territory. So it's likely going to be worldwide. This would be about 50 to 60 euros, meaning the Switch could be sold at $250 USD starting next week. Now, it's notable that the tweet just says it's set to drop uh, from Monday and sell. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to drop the price on Monday. It could be that they're going to announce the price drop on Monday. I have no idea. Um, that is just what Nintendo Alerts is saying. And this is obviously a massive deal, uh, just as, you know, looking to the future of the pricing strategy for Switch consoles. Uh, obviously, dropping the price of Switch isn't going to matter for people that already own it. But when you're looking to buy a Switch now, you have a $350 option in Switch OLED, $200 light, and a $300 in your base model. And by the way, I've always been of mind that the OLED's going to replace the base model. And I almost think this price drop supports that notion. Because let's say it is $250 bucks this holiday. Eric actually brought this up on the Nintendo Prime podcast. He said, well, why would it be $250? So they can get rid of them. So like when they're done, when they decide they're done manufacturing the base model Switch, they can sell out of it quickly and then drop the price of the Switch OLED to 300 and that just becomes the new base model of Switch. And this is a strategy I thought Nintendo was going to implement for a long time. I would have been nice if they would have implemented it the day of launch. If like Switch OLED was 300 at launch and then 250 for the base model Switch. And there was a pricing snafu with Walmart way back in july like on july 17th or something there was a big um issue where walmart was actually refunding people 50 bucks on switch oled pre-orders with other people to think is it an error in their system is nintendo going to drop the price well they haven't dropped the price but the point is that it does make sense for switch oled to eventually be 300 within the next year and nintendo has to look to stay price competitive with everything else that's appearing on shelves around them i know nintendo doesn't always care what their competition is doing and that's true but they also have to care about mindshare and the way their product is perceived by the public when it is around those other competing products, which presumably at some point, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 will be readily available on store shelves. We hope, we think, maybe not. I have no idea. Uh, we recently talked about how shortages could be going all the way to 2023. But the bottom line is Nintendo does care about that perception. They want to still be that budget, family-friendly for everyone gaming platform and when other platforms that are for more hardcore people are, are almost around the same price it does make things look a little wonky for nintendo's strategy so long story short yeah i honestly think this is going to be something and it's something that uh is going to be i think a pretty big deal uh in the grand scheme i know there's some people that mentioned that they might be canceling their switch oled pre-orders because there's a hundred dollar price difference I also could say to those people uh, that are like going to buy the price drop version of the Switch that, hey, you could just, uh, I don't know, get, wait for the price drop on Switch OLED next year. But again, this obviously presumes this price drop's even happening. This is just coming from one person. It's a reliable person. It technically is only announced for France. So we're presuming that it will be a worldwide thing, but we don't actually know. Maybe it's just something special in France. I, Again, lots of unknowns here, but it does seem pretty likely that a Switch price shop would come at some point here. And you gotta remember, this holiday, it would be like the fourth holiday for Switch. Having a price drop around this time does also make logical sense. You could argue because of how well the Switch is selling, maybe it doesn't. But also, if you wanna maintain momentum, increase momentum, having a new model come out is one thing, but also decreasing price of old models is another. Now, obviously we wanna see price decreases for Switch Lite, I will, you know, if you're going to make only a $50 price difference, I feel like Switch Lite should be dropping to $150. Um, I, I always felt like $150 would be a nice spot for the Switch Lite, especially since I don't think Nintendo's selling a lot of Switch Lights anyways. Um, and then you can start to see a nice pricing strategy of $150, you know, $2, $250, and $300. Then again, I also think the base model Switch is going to get out of here, uh, and eventually that higher price $350 mark or so will be used for something like a Switch Pro. I know, I know, even mentioning the word Switch Pro probably got some dislikes, but 
we have to remember the Switch OLED is basically just a Nintendo Switch XL. And last time we got an XL model of anything was the 3DS. And one year later, they dropped the new Nintendo 3DS. So it's not unprecedented to still think a Pro could happen next year. Not saying it will. Not saying we have any new information or any new details. And if one is going to come next year, the smoke will start flaring up at some point next year in the rumor mill, just like it did this year before OLED. So again, we'll have to wait and see on that front. It's also possible Nintendo says, screw it and next gen begins in 2023. And then you can start the question, do you even buy a Switch right now? Because the new gen is gonna be out in 2023 and you're just wasting your time and your money. And I always say this, buy the system if it has enough games that already justify you owning it. Don't worry about what's coming down the line. Don't worry about a new model. Don't worry about the OLED. Don't worry about a Pro or new gen. Worry about what's already available because if all you worry about is what's already there, you're gonna be happy with your purchase day one. If you worry about what's to come or what's been promised to come and you buy things on future promises, I know this is literally how Sony sells PlayStation 5s, right? They promise you future games. But what happens if those games not only get delayed, end up not being as good as you hope they are, you might end up regretting your purchase. Don't have to worry about that if you wait till there's enough games already there to justify you spending your money. Then it doesn't matter if there's a price drop. It doesn't matter if new models come because you should already be happy because the same reasons you bought that system still exist. Just because a new model is out, just because there's new games coming, that doesn't change why you bought the system. I don't know. That's just my free advice to all of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. Oh, by the way, um, I know I got some feedback uh, during the podcast, but I'm actually curious how the audio is and if you guys can notice the difference from this compared to prior videos. Um, we do have these new uh, lavalier microphones. Here's here's the one that Eric would use. Uh, it's got a lot thicker cord, and obviously, see the size of that mic. It's it. This thing is massive. Well, maybe I gotta hold it up against the screen here for you to see. It. This thing is huge. Uh, this mic's not turned on right now, but the one that clipped to me is. I'm just I'm just curious if it was worth the investment. These were not cheap lavalier mics. These are some of the most expensive ones on the market, actually. So, um, but being expensive doesn't necessarily mean better. We did a lot of research before we bought these. Um, they seem to at least review really, really well in comparison to the ones we were using. But obviously, you guys are the ones that had to listen to me in your ear. Uh, so, I mean, especially you guys wearing headphones. Let me know. Let me know. I care very much about providing quality audio. That's why we invest the money we do in our setup, in the set, and everything, because we want to provide excellent video and excellent audio, especially. We always want our listening experience to be as good as it can be. All right, folks. That's it. Bye.